Welcome back, people, to another episode of the Amateur Hour podcast, episode 29, to be precise. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, as always, whenever you are listening to myself and Connor. We're in for a special one uh, this evening, or whenever you're listening to it, like I said. We have got Cameron Flex on Instagram, I think it is. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Brown is his actual last name. Cameron Brown, Cameron Flex, Baby J baby Dennis Wolf, whatever you want to call him. Honestly, he has just won his class at the Hard Body Classic. I've been wanting to get him on um, because I think previously, mate, he did a prep under Adam Powell. Adam Powell was his coach, yeah. Who is a natty bodybuilder, very good natty bodybuilder, mate. so he knows a lot about um, knows a lot about bodybuilding. But it'll be really good to see, obviously, the difference with heading over to Dan, obviously with Dan's um, ideology, obviously, as well, expert knowledge around PEDs. Um, I thought sort of, we sort of know the answer already, but it's probably a little bit more in depth. Uh, and it'd be good to see how his prep this time round compared to um, last time round was. Um, so, mate, how long have you known him for? Have you known because you know him quite well, don't you? Yeah, mainly through social media. I've never met him um, in person. I've been, I think, I've spoken to him through social media for maybe two years, mm-hmm. just over maybe. Um, Fucking sick, bro. I remember seeing his shit on, I think it was TikTok when I first saw him because everyone was like referring him to looking like a Jay Cutler because um, of just how young he is. Um, and at that time when I was training with Marv, like there was a lot of people like pairing them together. Like uh, Marv looked like baby Ronnie and, and Cam looked like baby Jay or whatever. So I remember speaking to him around that sort of era. Um, and yes, yeah, stayed in contact. Like he's, he's super nice. Really, really cool guy. So it'll be a good chat. Obviously, find out his plans moving forward after winning the the class at hard body uh, mm-hmm. he said he's just got off another hour cardio today so we will uh get him i i, I can feel that his face is going to be sunken in when we get him on it oh mate for sure i've seen his face yeah. mate it looks ridiculous yeah um but he's waiting so let's get him on let's get not mess in. around he should be in very very soon here he comes The main man. There he is. Here he is. He's in. How you doing, bro? Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, we got you now, bro. Happy days. Happy days. Yeah, I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, good, bro. Face is in. I know, mate. I know. It's coming more and more in. I'm going to look like a prisoner of war. Yeah. After this, which is good. Yeah, how are you doing? So, how's how's everything feeling at the moment? Uh, honestly, mentally all good, but my legs are feeling it. Um, uh, my my coach Dan has put up my cardio to an hour and a half a day, which, oh, is, okay. which is beautiful. And then, yeah. and went see you later to any sort of a happy amount of carbs. So yeah. for the next seven to eight days it's going to be pretty it's going to be a, a heavy dig just to make because obviously this is the the last show of this year that i'm doing okay. um you got to beat for it don't you so yeah. come in the best possible because the, the last show we we're coming in 90 95 percent because obviously yeah, yeah. Your, your body only wants to peak once so come in that come in like a decent condition um and then trial run see what we can do in the sort of like carb up phase and everything like that because obviously it's the first time we're doing it together yeah. um and then you know do 100 percent the next one yeah but before you got on um so obviously with your with your first prep you uh you were prepped by adam powell right no my first ever prep oh, yeah, sorry, the, the prep the the last oh, the one before yeah yeah adam powell really really good yeah. has a lot of a lot of knowledge in nutrition um but because he's a natural himself i needed a a little bit more on the uh ped side of, of, of things because I, I was doing that but then when you're coaching yourself in those areas and in training yeah you get to your head a little bit more thinking yeah, yeah, i, think I need to do more of this i need to do more of that i need to add this when you don't yeah. um so i just needed someone just to take take the reins yeah and i just I just follow follow it like a like a machine. So, yeah. How um how long was the the prep for your the hard body? 
Like up until now, how long has it been? It's been about 20 weeks. 20 weeks. So what will prep be total? It'll be like 23, 24? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, 22, 23. Yeah, about that. So okay. it's de- decent prep. Not, nothing crazy. Like I've done longer before. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> which I think is a little bit too long when you're just straight on prep. No, like maintenance periods in between yeah um but yeah tw- 20 to 23 weeks that would be like the total and the, the full thing yeah wicked bro. Just, uh, um we tommy's wi-fi has just gone so he's going to jump on in a minute but so getting back to your so the beginning of your prep right so you started how you did you take it for a full year off or was that yeah it was yeah, a, yeah. so in that in that full year were you working with dan as well or did you just jump on with dan for prep no i i was with dan probably three four months before prep yeah um so the stint of it i was doing by myself okay because i didn't i didn't want to just jump into like another coach i had coaches in mind um but i was just like dan's way of and look uh, like look on onto bodybuilding is exactly the same as me yeah so and it and it's literally perfect like it was the perfect coach i I ain't gonna be leaving him forever to be honest um literally works so well he's constantly on it like he's he, there's not one day that he's flapped off um it's perfect communication everything like that so yeah probably th- yeah for three four months into the off se- um at the end of the off season part like we pushed pretty hard and then we just started started prep straight yeah. away okay yeah. and are you you're still a technically a junior aren't you are you still 23 or are you no 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 no. 24 now so come out yeah come out of juniors so that's why i was just in the uh uh open my heavyweights now um because i didn't do many junior shows um i only did two junior shows i remember you did the the two rows which two bro show did you as a junior um I remember, I remember seeing it, and the like when they announced you coming on onto the stage, it was like they had to yeah. remind everyone, like this, this is a junior. Yeah, yeah, Ian Constable, the guy that runs the two bros, one of the guys that runs the two bros. Yeah, he, he was just like, bear in mind, this he is he is twenty three or twenty three yeah. under, like that. Yeah, so that that was the one that I did did with Adam, the previous one. Um, is that? No, I think I've only done one other junior bodybuilding. That that one is okay. the only junior one. All the other ones I've done weight class. Yeah, yeah. Um, bad decision. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. You know, honestly, how, how long? Not, how long have you been? <laughs> how long have you been competing for total now? So obviously you've done this prep now, one with Adam, and then previous to that, how many have you done? Previous shows before that, I think it was about five shows. Okay. Yeah, five or six shows before that. And that was, uh, so my dad did, um, like prepped me for my first two, three shows. Oh, cool. And then I did the the next few shows by myself and then jumped yeah. on with a, with a coach. Nice. Okay. That's like, mad. How, how did you find that? Because a lot of people actually get coached by their dads. I didn't actually realize it's actually quite a popular thing, their dad's into bodybuilding. Yeah. So your dad's into bodybuilding, is he? Um, well, oh, he cool. used to. When he was at university, he uh, he used to do bodybuilding himself and he competed, um, but then he joined the Royal Marines. Um, so he, he gained, it was very old school knowledge in regards to that. So the, the first, the, fr- the first um, prep was, it was pretty hefty. It was almost like I, I, I stopped, I stopped rugby. I just fell out of, lug- of love with rugby um, and I was just gymming. I love training and I just wanted to just get bigger and bigger. And then one of the days he, he came back home and he was like, I've signed you up for a bodybuilding show, eight months time. And I was like, all right. He was like, you've got a few more months left in the off season. Then we're going to start the diet in three months. And I was like, okay, Sam, right, let's, let's do this. And it was That's almost classic. like, a, yeah, it was almost like a, an ultimatum. It was, uh, let's see if he actually likes this. If not, then he'll be like, okay, I, I don't like this. I'm going to choose a different route because bodybuilding is a very, you know, it's a, it's a 50 50 thing. If you love it or you hate it. Um, and I absolutely fell in love with it straight away. So, yeah, it was literally from that point, it was just taken off. That's good, bro. That's class, man. Yeah. That's so good. And he, so I might have missed it because I've just been away. So, you started off playing rugby when you were younger? Yeah. 
yeah, so I started playing rugby at five years old. Um, and then, yeah, that, that was just my thing. Even though like, I, I went to, so when I was eight years old, I uh, got put into a boarding school. So obviously being a military son, um, same with my sister, we moved around every, like two to five years. So it was a constant move. And then my, my parents didn't want me to, you know, be the constant new boy in the school like my dad was because his my granddad was in the Navy. Um, so he didn't want that. So we got stuck, uh, put into boarding school for 10 years and we got introduced to all sports imaginable. So mm-hmm. I was in the, the swimming squads, the uh, first team hockey, football, uh, rugby, uh, cricket, athletics, the, the, the works. Um, so I've always been like into any sort of sport, but rugby was my my forte um and I did, I did that all the way through school and then when I joined the senior school they basically the, the first team rugby coach and the um first team hockey coach had a meeting with the headmaster and myself going which one you, you wanted to do you can go to pro in rugby or you can go to the olympics in hockey and I was like sorry I'm, I'm choosing rugby <laughs> so when, Mate, who wants to go hockey anyway uh, I know I know um, it's a great sport though it is fun it is fun well with the position that I was playing so I was right mid or right attack or right strike really um, so I get get to shoot the goals and be the glory boy but um, it, 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 was, it was a fun sport it's a fast sport but it sucks when you get hit by the hockey ball but yeah mate, I, I I that. it's weird yeah. though, because I've had the same sort of like, I had the same sort of upbringing where I played rugby from a young age Mm. Moving around the RAF family, so I was moving here, yeah, yeah. RAF line, I'm RAF chipping them, always been the new guy. Yeah. Like, like every single score, two, three years move, and then next thing you know, they're there, like, then I started playing rugby, did all right at rugby. So it's like, it's, it's weird how it's like the same sort of thing where, yeah, yeah. Like, having them around, and then they're, they're like, yeah, do you want to do this? And they're like, nope, never scored two, three years, and I was another new guy, and then that's why I came back to stuff. So it's all sort of like, it's quite. If it's the same as me, which is quite cool. To say. Yeah. It's, it's, it's never the, I never usually come across somebody who comes from like maybe like rugby to usually get some, but then like with an RAF yeah. family moving around here and there and playing different yeah. sports when they're growing up. So it's good to hear that actually. It's good to hear. What position do you play in rugby? Scrum half. When I was playing playing yeah, it's either scrum half or hockey, mate. Not gonna lie. So I was just thinking, might yeah, yeah but, I, um, I would I wouldn't be a scrum half anymore. That's for, that's for sure. I'll probably be stuck in the front row. Something. You would be, you'd be you, you would be a front row, mate. But that's yeah. class. so what? Sorry, mate, I've, I've missed probably everything. But in but terms we... of in terms of how this weekend went, get like, tell us everything about it in terms of how it went. Your expectations. You obviously have high expectations going into the show. What did you actually think of the show as well when you actually turned up? Because me and Connor have got our own like sort of like thoughts and feelings in it, and we had like four people that sort of stood out about the whole show. Yeah. Um, well. I won't be able to give much information about other competitors because I don't I don't really like hanging around at the show. Uh, I, after I'm done, I, I just basically I, I shoot off because I've I've done my job. Um, I'm, I'm not really interested in watching anyone else because um, I'm only there like to see what my competition is going to be, and that's in the bodybuilding section. So that the classic and. Uh, physique and everything like that I, I haven't really got much of an interest to watch um but obviously you know um there, there, there was not a lot of numbers that that turned up and you know after you've put in a, a serious graft of work you, you want to go up against a good amount mm-hmm. you know at, at least at least four people do you know what I mean so you have a podium plus one um mm-hmm. Because when when it's just three, then everyone's going to get on the podium, and then if it was like myself, it's just you, so you're going to win the category. Um, but yeah, so back backstage turned up. It was a nine eight nine a.m. kickoff, so it was, which I I think is brilliant. I think it's brilliant how early they get the men's bodybuilding on because obviously we have to put our body under some serious amount of stress in regards to water depletion and dehydration and everything like that. Um, and in the morning, you're going to be able to bring your best package because the later on, 
the more and more water and the the worse you're starting to feel because you're dehydrated for longer so on and mm-hmm. so forth which they're discussing about the olympia because the big boys get on stage at 10 a, uh, 10 p.m i was gonna, I was gonna say they're gonna cover that where it's like their bodies their body clock is literally going to sleep and they're trying to yeah. peak their physique to be the best but yeah, yeah. their circadian yeah. rhythm is going to sleep <laughs> so yeah. no exactly and then you get all the older geezers going oh they're not as dry as we are yeah because it, it was one it was only you guys at the competition yeah. and two uh you were competing at like between 11 a.m and 1 p.m so your body's mm-hmm. prime that's perfect there, time there wasn't like 40 men's physique competitors that you got run through no. as well beforehand no there was yeah, women's was just... men's 212 so on and so forth but yeah it was it was really really good how it's nice and early um absolutely fantastic um but obviously you're backstage and you're like that's the air it's a bit empty back here isn't it um so yeah um that that's that's always the annoying part but then obviously not being a junior now and being in the open i get to go into the overalls and i still got to compete against others so the guy that won the overall he's also coached by dan as well so being able to you know battle against your own teammate it, it doesn't get better better than that but that was it. That was his peak show. So he came in, you know, fully. He, he was looking mm-hmm. nice, nice and peeled, glutes fully in, uh, dry as hell. Um, but yeah, no, the, the, yeah, that, that's the only part I was there for. Registration the day before was swift. That was on time. Um, so obviously, I've done other shows and dis- different federations before where you're waiting around for donkeys. Um, or it's on the day registration, so you're having to wait around and then you're having to wait for longer for you to get on stage. So I like it how they do the the day before you register, then you can bugger off and get it's always better the next day. It just makes it less chill, it makes it less stress and more chilled out. Yeah, and it gives you a little bit of a feel for the environment that you're gonna be in uh, the, for sure. the next day, which is yeah, which sure. is nice. So it gets your head ready a little bit. Um but yeah, that that's the the, the only bad bit i'm taking out of it is would would be the numbers uh in mm-hmm. all honesty um like the show was smooth um the music was all good the lighting was probably the best i've seen and the, the photos because i i didn't i i didn't bother paying for the photo package um and it was literally just like my family taking photos off the phone and stuff like that um and even f- through an iPhone camera, the the lighting was pretty solid. And I was like, Do you know, what? I'll, 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 t- I'll take that. Yeah, um, we saw some, we saw some pictures of you on stage, especially with like your uh, your back shots, mate. I'm thinking decent, very very good. In terms you, of the uh, but now it you you didn't peak for this show because you're mm-hmm. this is like your main show, is it? So, what was sort of the protocol like running into this show? Did you change anything? Or was it just like a normal day? Um. Yeah, we, we still did change stuff. We we um still did like it was almost like a, a little practice one. Yeah. So we still did the water depletion. We did a I would say probably about a 70, 80 percent carb up. Like we kept it really light. Yeah. Um so uh, let me let me think. So I think I did so sad show. Uh Wednesday and Thursday, so 500 grams or just over 500 grams of carbs on wednesday same again on thursday but then on the friday the day before i was a lot lower carbs but then slightly higher fats just Mm. to keep me moderate still keep me full but we didn't want to we wanted to make sure that the next day we weren't uh going into a rebound phase where then you were having to you know pull back loads of water and fighting against that part because we know that we've only got seven to eight days after that show yeah. to get even the conditions. So mm-hmm. we didn't want to waste any more days with water faff and, and stuff like that. So I would say, yeah, it was just a, a complete practice run to make sure, okay, th- this works with my body. This works with my body. Um, but yeah, we, 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 we tried out, you know, a, a small amount of diuretics and, and stuff like that, which my body worked very, very well with because mm-hmm how my body reacts extremely fast to any sort of change um but also sometimes counteracts itself with water so you did this st- I, I did the standard you know slowly taper up your water and i've got up to nine and a half liters uh the day that uh, on thursday and on friday dropped it considerable amount and only drank 
um, it was like 500 mils or 200 mils, depending on what the food intake was in meal time. So that's the only times I drank. But as soon as I pulled back the water, my body was like, I'm not peeing. I'm not, I'm not letting go. And I was yeah. like, God, damn. So that's when we had to in- introduce, you know, a little bit of vitamin C and some uh, a tiny, tiny bit of diuretics just to get my body to get rid of the water. So that went well. That was all good. So, yeah, we know what we're going to be doing into the, going into the next show. That's and good. And what, yeah. what is the next show? Coming through. It, what is it? it is the uh, Spain Empro Classic in Alicante. It's the Pro Qualifier, so a big one. Yeah, really good one because good. I, I I know for a fact that there's going to be a lot of competitors there. Mm-hmm. So I'm I, I'm going to be able to match up my physique with you know if it if it doesn't go well, I'm still young. I don't I I'm not I'm not, I'm not blind to the fact. I'm not going to go. Oh, I should have won my pro card. This, that, and the other. I've got. If if I don't, then I don't. I go away, I work, I get better, I get bigger, I, d- I do what I need to do, and that's just the process of bodybuilding. But I'm able to then actually go, okay, these guys are in my weight category. He beat me here, 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 and here. I need to go away and bring up those areas. So That's good, that's that is. A, it, it's good yeah. that you're looking at it from an objective perspective, because a lot of yeah. people think, oh, yeah, I've looked really, really good, and I can just go, especially when you don't compare yourself to anybody. Obviously, when you don't compare yourself to anyone in your first show, well, yeah. yeah, looking brilliant. And then next thing you know, they come against four or five other guys in the next show and they're coming fifth and sixth. So yeah. the fact that you've got your objective data from this peak in terms of you're not even fully peaked, but you probably achieved what you wanted to. Yeah. You then compared yourself against people, even though obviously that was, wasn't that many people, you compared yourself uh-huh. against others in terms of how you looked how you look like previously. And then you can be like, okay, well, I'm still young. I'm going to a big show. There's loads of competitors there. You're going to be in a really good position anyway because you've done exactly what you need to do for this show got a little bit more condition guess over the next week or so and then you're going to peak perfectly for this one so from an objective 100%. perspective from an a bodybuilder's objective perspective you've done exactly what you wanted to achieve from this prep and yeah. we haven't we haven't even done the second show yet so it's exciting yeah. for sure mate it's exciting for sure oh, 100%. yeah mega mega excited for it because well the thing is i just love competing and i love this sport and i just constantly want to improve obviously i've got my my goal is to get to the Olympia and bloody hell, we'll win the Olympia. That would be that would be amazing. Um, but I know, and I'm not stupid to the fact that there's a process to it. And I'm I'm tw- I'm 24, so that's this young, especially for it's <laughs> especially for you know like 212 and maybe going in, like in the future if when I'm struggling to get into 212 into the Open, um most of those guys you know that when, when their physique is at their prime their mid 30s late 30s early 40s when it's that really freaking grainy muscle maturity is just popping everything Mate, you've got crazy. 10 years until yeah. you're literally at that point where you're going to be peaking like another 10 years mate which no, exactly so that's why they, they everyone or the, the 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 greats always go it's it's a marathon just enjoy the journey and improve yourself constantly. Don't slack off. Just constantly just go at it, go at it, go at it. And don't expect things just to happen. Just work for it. And then fate will have it. And that will be your time when you get it. So, yeah, no, it's, it's all good. It's, would you say that's your biggest sort of piece of advice? Because you're so young. Like, you're same age as me, mate, you're just mental. Would you say that's your biggest piece of advice from what you've learned over the years of competing in terms of like not going to, cause you see people competing for the first time. They want to win. Like my first show, I wanted to, everyone was like, why don't you do a first time show? And I was like, even though it's my first time competing, I want to get compete against the best junior. So I didn't even do a first time. And then mm. I came like sick in my first show, but I knew I competed against the best juniors yeah. in the country. So, so I literally came with mm. people who were competing at the, um, at the finals that year. And I got way more out of that rather than going to some show, coming first, put on my Instagram that I came first in the show. I got way more out of it getting sick yeah. in one show rather than first in another show. So 100%. would you say that's the biggest bit? Well, what other piece of advice that you give to like young up and coming junior bodybuilders that want to get into it? The, uh, it'll probably be a few bits. So one, yes, always compete to win. Always compete to win. Don't don't compete to, you know, come just to just to do it so always compete to win for sure because that's when you know in your mind you're going to try and bring your best package even it might if even if it might not be the outcome you you know that you were trying to do that um two don't 
don't rush things because when you rush things you you will make stupid mistakes if it's in regards to health injury anything like that just do do the small incre- increments where it needs to be increased mm-hmm. um and uh, of course with with peds more more is not better more, more is never better um because a lot of people think oh these olympia guys are on x amount they're not most amateurs are on more than what the mr are people on. don't realize this though mate. you get these genetic outliers that go to the olympia that don't need they're so super responsive to like small super physiological like ranges and then you get amateurs who are taking loads and then you get some of them who are just taking half of what they're taking which is mental yeah. um but I'd say, that's a, I'd say that's a big thing there. Trying to get, yeah. trying to eke out the most from the least when you're young. And then uh, I wouldn't say earn the right, essentially, but make sure that you're thinking of the long-term trajectory in terms of, well, uh, for example, with you, if you want to make sure that you're still progressing in 10 years' time, just making sure that you yeah. want to be sort of looking at that as a long-term scale rather than doing everything now and then like... Yeah, your, 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 health, your health has got to keep up with your, your muscles. So Mm-hmm. you got to make sure you're doing it all. Make sure you do your bloody cardio as well in your off-season because too many people get fat and a little belly on the bottom. Mm-hmm. That, that's not bodybuilding. You know, keep, keep your abs. Yeah. It's true, though. Honestly, it's true. I would say that's my biggest part in terms of competing as a first-timer. Just enjoy the process. Okay. And definitely compete to win. But obviously, if you compete to win, obviously your actions are going to lead you to making sure that you but don't put the expectation of you, I have to win, I have to come first. If you know that you've done everything that you possibly can do to achieve what, the look that you wanted to. And this well, mate, if you can look back and said, I can't actually get much better than that, that's the fact that but people try and sort of dictate the outcome with so the basically how good it was by the outcome. So, ah, oh, I didn't come first, so it was a shit prep. So, but in actual fact, if you look at it from a rational perspective, did yeah. you come did you, did you did you improve your physique from last time? Yes, that's a success. Take exactly. that away and then just improve more. That's for sure. That's it's so true. It's true. In, in regards to obviously with your prep last time with Adam compared to your prep this time with Dan, with it being you know you're bringing a better package each time. What has like been the main differences in in styles of, of preps? Um, I would say eating, eating more real food. Okay. Um, less, less protein shakes and everything like that, because I haven't had like, like a protein powder in probably over, over a month now. Um, uh, mm-hmm. just basically the, the, the main sources of protein that I'm getting at the moment is mince, chicken, salmon, sometimes when there's an increase of fat when it was getting closer to the show um, and cod, so what white fish. So th- those are the main protein sources I'm getting, of course, egg whites and uh, oil eggs, but not very, very rare that I'm having any sort of protein powders or that that stuff. I'm not saying it's bad, that, yeah. that stuff, but it's definitely given my physique a different look. Okay. It's definitely like more of a a plaster scene sort of if if you look at there's a weird weird analogy but if you look at an, at an action man right and and their sort of skin their, their skin quality against the against the actual muscle it's more of that look which is very, oh, yeah. so, much, so much more i pleasing. don't know what you mean it's probably less stress as well um yeah. like think about it, it's probably you put, you put yourself in a position where you probably digest food better and this is where the benefit of probably dan getting coached by hilly his digestive issues putting that onto you maybe i think yeah, that's probably maybe. helped you massively in terms of understanding okay what can i actually do to my physique to make it look better and it's something that at the end of the day mate, it's very minute isn't it swapping out protein uh so i got whey protein whey isolate for more whole sources not more whole sources but more of a whole source with um, yeah. actual meat source um and as you see there from anecdotal evidence you yeah. so, 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 like, it's better mate I think it's just less it, stress down to the digestive system, GI, all these different yeah, things. Maybe, um, but it, the thing is, it worked. It worked for me. That mm-hmm. that's that's the one thing that I'll, I'll put out there. It might not for others. Other people like one, one of my meals that I, I re- regularly what was having has dropped down a little bit now. But I would be having three hundred grams of mince beef, 
but that might be way too much for people's digestive systems like i've got no problem digesting a serious amount of like protein food itself Mm -hmm. i don't have to switch out to anything that's gonna you know be more comfortable like it can get through a lot and as well as the 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 carbs i'm having is there's only two sources of carbs and it's rice or it's oats and that's it and it works so well so no bloody bagels because it's bread and it's it's peasant food um it's, it's just terrible um so really good high quality carbs as well um so yeah it's, it's just that, that that's one of the main things obviously um the the pd protocol is a lot, a lot better because honestly I, i'm very estrogen sensitive um like of get, getting gyno and everything like that um and one of the the things the reason why that is is so i was born in california um and the, the meats and everything like that over there are pumped full of hormones um and obviously my, my mom was having that i was in her belly and it was you know it creates a different hormone function in, in, in me whilst i was there and it made you know me more susceptible to any sort of you know estrogenic effects um mm-hmm. so the the ai protocol was extremely good um you know the the constant shift the, the shift and the the timing of what needs to change leading up to the show or in the off season perfect um and then the training as well because i've always been a very high volume heavyweight sort of guy you know I, I love jay cutler and everything like that so i train trained like him and i would be doing exactly the same training all the way up to the show okay. but what changed this time is that he a, a month month and a half out he reduced my volume right back down and i was doing the thing that i thought that i would hate which is the top loads more top set and back offsets on my on, on my main movements actually the quality of my sessions because i'm on like barely any food everything like that your body crashes quickly during the session and it can't take as much volume but you want to make sure that your output and you're keeping your muscles fuller so being able to hit that top set as heavy as possible and then you've got the back set the back offset it works so much better and my fatigue um throughout the session was was a lot better and the performance was a lot better so yeah th- th- those areas were solid yeah, i'm not surprised that's what i think a lot of people overlook in terms of training performance and actually maintaining tissue by doing less because your output is going to be less because your demand is going to be a little bit higher with being in a deficit anyway with eating less yeah. food so your overall demand is going to be higher anyway so you want to make sure that when you have that demand and the output that you are putting out is high quality yeah. So it's going to be less if you're doing extra volume drop sets, intensifiers towards the back. Yeah. And obviously you, might have, you might have a few here and there, like a few, like a few rest boards, like oh, set extenders, yeah, maybe. Yeah, of course, but um, mainly on the isolations. Mainly exactly. On the isolations. Yeah. On, 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 on the on the compounds, obviously, it, it's it's just top set back offs at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, isolations. Then I'll be doing you know three to four straight sets or. <laughs> Um, like a drop set on pec decks and, and yeah. everything like that so on on the areas where you can do it on the isolation but not on incline barbell and, and stuff like that so, oh yeah for sure but i think yeah. it's, it's such an overlooked factor though. and like you said fatigue management alongside pd management estrogen probably like tapering down testosterone increasing mastron sort of like modulating estrogen through that so sort of like yeah, close proximity yeah. towards stage like that's where in my opinion where you go especially <laughs> with the goals that you have I'm not saying, like I said, with Adam, obviously, with what he, your needs at that time can probably match. But then when you want to get to that next level in terms of these things, where if you go to somebody who you are Eastern sensitive and somebody has that knowledge to be like, okay, do yeah. this, do that, do that, do that. And the next thing you know, your body's just getting better and better and better. And you're reducing stress, your training's getting better, your body's looking great. Like that's yeah. where it's like you can just take stress off yourself, knowing that somebody's like, yeah, I know your body inside out, you can do this. Yeah. Next thing you, know, you just look better. You've gathered data from the first show. Next thing you know, you run it, it's just more confident. The more confident you are in a prep, as you know, mate, the better you're going to look, the less stressed you are, the more you're going to enjoy the process. The, so it all comes down to the coach, in my opinion. It, it does. 
<laughs> it, 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 it can be. Uh, it, it does come down to the coach, but then at the end of the day, the client needs to. Oh, for sure. To put in the work. Oh, yeah. I'm the, getting, obviously, the, with, with people like obviously like yourself who just put in the work anyway. I saw him like, yes, yeah. you're asking for more cardio when he said take out cardio. So it's like, it's, um, but that's the thing, mate. You get people that just want to do more and want to do, yeah. want to get better and better and better. But like I said, yeah. from, a, from an ideal perspective, if the client's nailing everything, the coach should be like, okay, do this. Yeah. Because I, I, I can, I can guarantee Connor can agree because he's an online coach as well. So, you you're putting a client in a in a deficit with a decent amount of calories, but then for some reason their weight's not going down, and they're complaining that the program's not working. And you're like, well, uh, no, because your your calories have dropped by five hundred, and your cardio has gone up by twenty minutes per day. You will lose weight from that. So yeah, it does it does matter about the client putting in the work at the same time. But obviously, coaches' knowledge is is going to be so beneficial. It, it, especially for competitors lifestyle clients are slightly different but yeah for sure the, uh, can't do work stuff. <laughs> the next show that's coming up so obviously the m pro that is your that's 100 the final show of the year but there's no other show yeah there. no it's it, it i've i've had to cut the season shorter for this year because i've got a little boy on the way um congratulations night. mate thank you which was um, a very, very emotional time for me mm. when when I found out, uh, because obviously being a bodybuilder, you you convince yourself because of the stuff you take that you will really most likely not be able to have your own family. Um, and I, I came to terms with that in my own head, even though I never tested myself in you know, the sperm count or anything like that. I, I, I came to terms in my own head that I, I can't, um but then bob's your uncle here you go cam have a little boy um so yeah so it was mega emotional extremely extremely happy because i come from a very family orientated background same with the missus as well um so we're very very close so being able to have my own my own son especially um it's it's an unbelievable feeling and it just it it just motivates me even more in in my bodybuilding because it's given me an a, a bigger why like mm-hmm. a bigger why do i want this and it's it's gone from for me like i want this why do you want to come because i want to be successful and then now it's why do you want this cam and it's i want to be successful for my family and make sure I'm putting them in a comfortable position um, for, for the future and, and leave a leave a stamp on this world at the end of the day. So, yeah, so I've got an extremely good year this year with 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 the little man coming. That's class, mate. Like I say, congratulations, man. That's class. Thank you. No, I appreciate it. Is good. It. So, yeah, rounding off, round off that show, and then the next time you compete is just like whenever you feel like i feel like you're one of those people that probably goes probably looks at yourself and go it might be ready but then you wait another year and go okay now it's probably ready you probably look at yourself from like a year to year perspective and go um not really um so i, I well, i'm planning to do because obviously this is twice now that i've done june shows and there hasn't been many mm-hmm. people so i'm most likely going to be doing next year so august september october times because I know that obviously there's regionals in August, and then I think well th- this year for sure there's um, regional in August, and then there's was it the British British or Championships in yeah, the British huh? yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So hopefully, hopefully it's going to be the same setup next year. Most likely it will because if mm-hmm. it's, it's they always have some sort of the, the closest matching dates each year. So I'll be doing that because one I know that there's going to be more people there. So yeah, August, September, October is when I'm going to be competing next year. Oh, for sure mate love that yeah love that. so connor get your ass up there i want to compete against you i'm planning on doing slightly earlier shows but to be fair the season might drag on until somewhat near where you're doing it so we will see mate oh yeah mate imagine that <laughs> what, 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 what weight cap category are you what light heavies did you say there's no way light you're like... heavyweight. Light heavyweight. are you at the top so, of that huh are you at the top of the the category like the weight cap uh yeah, just slightly over halfway on it. 
Jesus. So I've still got some growing room, so I could diet, 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 like really down into it. Yeah. Um, I, th- I thought you were heavyweight. You no, not yet. Heavyweights, mate. Yeah, like, no, honestly, really we sure. thought you were heavies, mate. We, yeah. we, Connor was like light heavies. I was like, nah, 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 definitely heavies. So I was I was like, there's like, no like, way he's a light heavy looking like that. Fuck. Yeah, that's the, the, the benefit of whatever black man but Caucasian muscles that I've got <laughs> that, that Dan keep my coach keeps on saying he's just like you're the you're the, the whitest black man uh, I've ever had um, what a compliment <laughs> yeah which is which is sick because uh, their 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 structure is just it's uncomparable yeah. you, you, like Phil Heath Ronnie like look at their freaking their muscle bellies and everything like that is ridiculous Compared to us white boys, we've just got the, we've just known for a white boy grain. That's that's about it. But um, yeah, because it takes like I've got very round muscle bellies and ex- like extremely skinny joints, so it gives off the illusion that I'm a lot bigger than my weight, which it is perfect for like two twelve and in you know, bodybuilding, mate. That's great <laughs> bodybuilding. At, 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 yeah, so yeah, which is it's, it's sound. Um, but it, obviously, it depends how much size i put on in the in the off season if i am going to be going into the heavies which probably might happen yeah would that would would that be sort of the path you want to take when slash if uh well definitely when go to uh in the pro leagues to go through the 212 route and then through to open eventually or is it kind of just yeah yeah no 100 percent 212 through to open because i think i'll be one more competitive in, in that area um and two i'll be able to build the, the the quality size because I've, I've seen some people that do the, these huge jumps yeah. and then it's like a oh you, you look better in the the last category yeah so <clears throat> building the the quality muscle really does pay a part which a lot of people miss out and they just want to get absolutely wham well, fair, fair enough get wham don't don't mind that but you're, you're missing a very very large factor bodybuilding is an art it's creating the perfect physique yeah. it's not just the biggest you, you need mm-hmm. to bear in mind so many other factors so yeah the 212 and then open would be you know the route like like Derek Lunsford for, for an example so yeah that that would be the perfect route for myself I rate that massively yeah. and everything you said I agree with as well people yeah. trying to put on muscle too quickly and then they look better than what they did previously or they look better what they did back then than what they do now yeah. so they try to tack on yeah. too much side straight away it's all about consistently getting better but working at the right areas keeping things tight all this so i can completely agree completely agree mate but mate that's all the questions that i've got to ask mate honestly awesome. honestly so that's all the... fantastic thank you for coming on mate greatly appreciate mate, it no, happy, happy uh, really really pleased that you guys asked is I, I feel wanted I mean, honestly, honestly though the reason why i want to get you on is because you're an up-and-coming young bodybuilder and your runway of progression is i said over the next 10 years 12 years that you're going to be doing this and the progression that you've made the transition that you've made what you've been through obviously mate it's fantastic it's yeah, fantastic nice. mate and it's going to be uh it's going to be good it's going to be a fun ride for sure especially like yeah in, a, in and around my my age my age group like con for example he's going to be a good comp- like competitor of mine I'm going to be going up against, which is brilliant. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so I know that people I'm going to be, you know, having to, where it's not like I'm just going to have, you know, a sweet, smooth sailing sort of route into into the pros. So I'm going to have a bit of, you know, grunt work to do. So, oh, which, which I love, I love competition. Um, and and with, with bodybuilding, because you're going through the same thing, you know, he's putting the work and it's the, the mutual respect and the joy and then your your mates at the same time. It's 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 a weird one, but it's a beautiful one. Yeah. It's good, isn't it? It's good. Yeah. It's what we love. But mate, tell the listeners and the and the watchers, Instagram, anything, that mate, fire across so they can follow you and they can watch you in the your final stages of this prep. Yeah, so well, Instagram is Cameron Flex, TikTok is Cameron Flex, and I haven't got I haven't got YouTube yet. People keep nagging me to start that, but I'll I'll sort I'll sort that out in in the off season, and I'll probably you know start it then. But just trying to focus down because I don't want to start something in the middle of something. Um, I'd rather do it properly. But yeah, both all, all everything's Cameron Flex, double X, double X, double X at the end. But now, mate, thank you for coming on. We greatly appreciate it. Appreciate People. you guys having me. Like.
subscribe if you're watching on YouTube, on Spotify. Give us a five-star rating. Tag us in the stories. Tag Cameron as well. Give him a follow. Watch the end of this prep. Watch the off-season. Watch him prep for next year as well, August time. And we will see you in the next one.